chapter number 7. And we're going to begin our reading this morning from verse number 15. Daniel chapter 7, please. I'm commencing to read at verse number 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. And so he told me, and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times, and the dividing of time. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. And as for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to that reading from His own precious truth. Here in our Scripture reading this morning, and in these verses that we have just read together, especially now, especially from verse 19 to the end, these verses and these words focus us to the future, to the future that is yet to be. From verse 19 onwards, this great vision that Daniel saw points to a day that is yet to come. You see, in Daniel chapter 7, Daniel receives this awful vision from God. It's a vision of four beasts. And each of these four beasts represented four world empires. You had the lion, you had the bear, and there was the leopard, 
And then there was this fourth beast, you know. The only description Daniel gives it is in verse number 8, dreadful and terrible. Verse 7. And in verse 8, Daniel considers something about this beast this morning. Out of it came ten horns. And out of these ten horns, there came a little horn. And that little horn is the Antichrist that will one day come on this earth. You see, these ten horns, they're the same, and this great vision is the same line of thought that Nebuchadnezzar the king had in Daniel chapter 2. In Daniel chapter 2, you'll remember Nebuchadnezzar the king dreamed this dream of a great image. And the great image had a head of gold. It had a breast and arms of silver. It had belly and thighs of brass. It had legs and feet of iron. And then it goes right down to the very toes, the ten toes. And they're described that they were made with iron and miry clay. Those ten toes and these ten horns all focuses us to what will happen in the not-too-distant future. All speak of the revived Roman Empire. And these ten horns and ten toes all point to the one day of the United States of Europe. You know, dear child of God today, it's not too far away. Somebody said, how can there be a United States of Europe with ten nations? So there's far too many nations. I think God is well able to break down Europe to fulfill His plan. Doesn't annoy me that, you know, because I can tell you now, perhaps maybe this whole Brexit thing is the beginning of the end. But before all this takes place this morning, the next prophetical event that happens in God's calendar is the rapture of the church. That's the time when the Lord Jesus will come to the air. And before what we read in Daniel chapter 7, 19 on, all the great things that's to take place, the rapture has to happen first. The Lord Jesus is coming to the air. And we have the Savior's promise in that. He says, I will come again. And child of God, come he will. You remember the angels in Acts chapter 1 verse 11? You remember what they said to the apostles when they watched the Lord Jesus ascending into heaven? They said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, as ye see go into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye see him go into heaven. And you remember what the apostle Paul said. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 16 Paul said that the Lord himself shall descend with a shout and with the voice of the archangel, I, and with the trump of God, and at that very moment the dead in Christ shall rise first. Do you know there's a moment coming when every graveyard and every cemetery is going to be emptied of its Christian dead and those who have died in Christ, those who died saved, Rise first. And when that moment happens, then Paul goes on to say, And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be ever with the Lord. And mind you, that's coming, friends. It's coming. 
And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 20, 52, that very moment will just happen in a moment, and it'll happen in the twinkling of an eye. And those who are saved this morning by God's grace, and those who have been born again of the Holy Spirit, and those this morning who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when the Lord comes to the air, will suddenly be taken in a twinkling of an eye. And I'll tell you this, Facebook and YouTube will have posts on it about the sudden disappearance of millions across planet Earth. And I'll tell you something else, dear child of God and dear unsaved friend. It's going to happen. And dear love you, unsaved friend, if the Lord should come this day and you be left behind, Because what this world is going to see after the church goes into heaven, I'm telling you, all the earthquakes and all the natural disasters and all these tsunamis and all these things are only Mickey Mouse to what's going to happen to this world. James 5 and 8 says, The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And the moment the church is raptured, God will bring about his plan. He'll bring this ten nations all together. And then there'll arise a great personality called the Antichrist, who's going to rule the world. And when the Antichrist appears, no man will be able to buy or sell unless they take his mark. And I can tell you it'll be a cashless society, and we're driving to that point at this very moment, a cashless society. Mind you, friend, the day in which we're living in is all pointing to it. But here's what the Lord wants to say to us this morning, and here's how He wants to speak to us. He wants to speak to us through the activities of the Antichrist. And he wants to point you and I this morning to the activities of the Antichrist that will take place that day and show you and I what Satan is doing in our day. Sometimes, child of God, we get so taken up with what the Antichrist is going to do in that day, we fail to recognize what Satan's doing in our day. My text is Daniel 7, verse 25. Let's read it. Daniel 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think it and think to change times and laws. The Antichrist will be Satan's superman on earth in a day to come. But when I look at Daniel 7 and verse 25, and I see the activities of the Antichrist in a day to come, I see in that text Satan's threefold strategy. Satan's threefold strategy that's taking place this very day. You know what I find, first of all, in that text? Satan always will attack the plan of God. He will always attack the plan of God. The text says, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. You know, when the devil speaks this morning, let me just warn you, when the devil speaks, his words are appealing. When the devil speaks, his words are convincing. And in spite of all that's going on in this world today, do you know we have an awful confusion today of what's going on in the world? Even Christians are confused. 
When they see what's happening in America, and when they see what's happening in the Middle East, and they see what's happening in the world, do you know what we forget today? God is still fulfilling His plan and purpose. And you know, dear child of God this morning, it may not make sense at present, but listen, God is still in, the con God is still in control. Sometimes God uses the horrible things to fulfill His plan. Do you remember Job in Job chapter 1? Job suffered terrible things. And in chapter 2, you'll find that through the lips of Job's wife, through the lips of Job's wife, Satan spoke great words against the Most High. Do you know what she said? She said to Job, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. The difference between Job and his wife was this. In spite of the pain and in spite of the suffering and in spite of the sorrow that he was plunged into, Job understood God was in control. And so much so he was able to say, The Lord gave and the Lord taketh away. Satan always attacks God's plan. My goodness, do you remember when he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt through the blood of the Lamb? God's plan was to bring them into the land of promise, to bring them into the land of blessing. And between Egypt and Canaan, there was many trials and there was many testings. And I'll tell you something now, child of God, there was many times there was many times even then the devil spoke, you know, through the lips of the complaining Israelites. And you know, one time they found themselves in a corner, and they started crying, and they said, Would to God we had died in Egypt! The devil can use a person's lips to speak great things against the Most High. And then there was another time in Numbers chapter 21, verse 5, when they were hungering for bread, and it says, And the people spake against God. Do you remember Peter? When the Lord Jesus was telling them about the whole plan of redemption and how he was to come and how he was to go to the cross and there he was to suffer terrible things and there he was to die, what did Peter say? Be it far from you, Lord. And the Lord Jesus turned round and says, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou savorest not the things of God. Child of God, you be very careful what way you talk, you know, because mind you, the devil can use your lips. And he can use my lips. You read Genesis chapter 6 there, you'll find where the sons of God intermarried with the daughters of men, the sons of God. This morning was the Sethite line, line, lineage through which Christ would be born. And the devil there in those days before the flood was enticing and tempting these, these Sethites this morning to go and marry into the ungodly line of Cain, which were the daughters of men, so that he, his plan was to pollute the lineage of Christ so that the Christ couldn't be born. And the devil took the angels that were involved and he chained them just before the flood and he put them into hell, Peter says. And that place in hell is a place called Tartarus. It's the abode of fallen angels and they're there this morning yet. And before it got too far, God wiped out Satan's plan by wiping the world out except for eight souls. From day one, you know, 
The devil attacked God's plan. My goodness, the Lord Jesus wasn't right on earth till Satan began his attack through her to seek the Lord Jesus to kill him. You know, child of God, Satan will always seek to attack, to bring down the plan of God, even in your life. But no matter what way he attacks God's plan this morning, God's plan will always be fulfilled. Satan always attacks God's plan, often by speaking great words against the Most High. My goodness, when he was on the cross, the blessed Savior, friend, did the crowd not cry that day, if thou be the Christ, if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross and we'll believe ye. That was the voice of the devil speaking great things against the Most High to get Christ down from the cross. You see, the devil always attacks God's plan. Look at that text again. Because not only does the devil always, or Satan always attacks God's plan, you read that text, he attacks God's people. Look what it says. It says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Yes, we know. Here we have the prophetical picture of the Antichrist. But in this text, I see the spiritual nature of the devil this morning. Satan will always attack God's plan. Aye, but he will always attack God's people. Child of God, Satan is a hater of God. And Satan is a hater, a hater, I tell you, of God's people. Look what it says. He shall wear out. Do you get them two words this morning? Wear out. Do you know that word, wear out? It's a great word that means unbearable weariness. Let me tell you something about weariness this morning. It's a great weapon in the hand of the devil, weariness. You see, when the child of God gets weary, that's when the child of God becomes vulnerable. When the child of God becomes weary, that's when Satan often strikes. I wonder this morning, is there a child of God and you're weary? You're wearied with worries. You're wearied with cares. You're wearied with problems. You're wore out this morning. When you're wore out, I can tell you now the devil knows you're vulnerable. You remember when, the, when Satan attacked the Lord Jesus, he was weary. Remember when he attacked the Lord Jesus when he was in the wilderness, when he wasn't hungered? That's when the devil moved in. He attacked him when he was wearied with hunger. You remember when he lay asleep in the boat? That's when the devil struck up a storm, attacked him when he was weary. That's how Satan works, child of God. He seeks to weary, you, to, to weary you and me out. Ephesians 4.27 says, Don't give place to the devil this morning. 
When 1 Peter 5 and 8, it says this, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil goeth about seeking whom he may devour. Do you know, I love those nature programs. Love them. I love it when they talk about the lion. Boys, I'm telling you, learn a lot about the lion. Do you know what I learn about the lion? The he lion has it all worked out. The he lion. Because you ever notice in those wildlife programs, it's, it's the she lion that does all the hunting. He makes her go out and do all the hunting, and he's lying sprawled out waiting for her to bring dinner. It's about like our house, I suppose. After a day in the study, I sprawl myself out, and I say to the she lion, Tracy, is my dinner ready yet? You watch them attacking. Man, they'll run the hair, they'll run the hair into the ground. And man, she'll run and she'll run until she gets a wearied one away from the pack or away from the herd. And when she gets the one that's wearied and worn out and tired, that's when she pounces. And you know, child of God, the devil's the same way, you know. He'll run you into the ground, I tell you. He'll run you into the ground with worries. And he'll run you into the ground with cares. And he'll run you into the ground with problems and trials. But here's the sad picture that a lot of Christians don't realize. As I have said already, when you're weary, you get vulnerable. And you see, when you get weary, you start moving away from God. You move away from your quiet time. And you'll move away from your Bible reading. And you'll move away from the meetings. And you'll move away from fellowship with other believers. And you'll move away, and you'll move away. And you don't know how far you've moved away until the devil strikes. And you see, once the devil strikes, you find it very hard to get back to the place where you once were. When you face this morning, child of God, pearls of weariness, beware. Beware that you don't become snared with carelessness. And watch you don't get snared with confusion either. Don't you pray this morning, don't you pray for an easier life. Don't you pray for an easier life. You pray this morning to be a stronger man and woman of God. If the devil's running you into the ground this morning with worry, here's a wee, here's a wee word the Lord has for your heart. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Here's what he wants you to do. You let your requests be made known to God and you leave them there. Don't you let the devil run you into the ground with worry. And here's another wee thing this morning. Perhaps he's running you into the ground this morning with cares. Here's a wee word from the Lord this morning. Cast all your caring upon me, for I careth for you. Why should you let the devil run you into the ground and wear you out with worries and with cares? Because, mind ye, that's how the devil attacks God's people. You seek to live God's way. And you seek to live according to God's Word. And you seek to live this morning in God's strength. Then you'll be a balanced believer. 
who will never fall foul to the enemy's attacks. I said that's a threefold strategy of Satan, yes. Look at that wee text again, and with this I'm finished. Listen to what it says. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. Do you know what that text teaches me? What the Antichrist will do in his day is what they Satan is doing in our day. Do you know what Satan's doing in our very day? He's not only attacking God's plan, and he's not only attacking God's people. I'll tell you, he's attacking God's principles. As the Antichrist in his day will seek to change laws, is that not what the devil's doing today? Take you a good look into the British court system, and you see the devil at work. Changing laws! That's attacking the principles of God. My goodness me, the very principle, God's principle of marriage has been attacked. And all these laws are being passed today, laws contrary to the Word of God, laws that are an abomination in the face of God. And you have men today in pulpits who will embrace anything, even teaching contrary to the principles of God. My goodness me, all you got to do is look at Genesis chapter 3 and think of what happened there. Do you know the first thing the devil attacked was the Word of God? Hath God said? And the big problem today, we have preachers who have diluted the Word of God down that it takes no effect on anybody and takes no effect on anything. And it's about time we prayed for our Christian politicians that the Lord would give them grace and guts to stand for the things of Scripture. Oh, friend, I can tell you the prince, God's principles are under attack today, the principles of marriage. The principles of a godly life with boys the day tenless, and you can be saved and live whatever way you like. Yes, that's not, that's not God's word. That's not God's principles for godly living. I'll tell you something else what's being attacked today. God's principles for salvation. There's a gospel being preached today, no repentance in it. A gospel being preached today with no cross in it. A gospel being preached today with no blood in it. Listen, child of God, don't you be getting taken up with what the Antichrist is going to do in his day. You get taken up with what the devil's doing in our day. Because this is what he's doing. And what you have in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25 is Satan's threefold strategy that's in place in our day. Generation. You see God's Word this morning. Fall in love with it. Psalmist says, Oh, how I love thy laws. The psalmist could say, In thy law do I meditate day and night. And if there ever was a day, child of God, you and I need to do something that's this day. And here's what we need to do. We need to stand up, stand up for Jesus. And praise God, the strife will not be long, because the end 
of all things is at hand. May God bless his word to our hearts this morning. Our closing hymn is 